You are one living thing made up of 37 trillion smaller things called cells. The combination of these cells are what allow your heart to beat, your stomach to digest food, and for your lungs to exchange air. But between these trillions of cells exist these little tiny organisms called bacteria. It's estimated that we have about 10 times as many bacteria cells as we do human cells. And the fact that we are one living thing that has trillions of other living things inside of us is pretty mind-blowing. And this got me thinking that if each one of us has trillions of living things inside of us, then how many living things are there in total? Right now at the moment, there's about 7 billion humans on this planet. Now that might seem like a lot, but it's actually only 14 quadrillionths of the total life on Earth. Well, this must be because of the extraordinary amounts of bugs and insects, right? I mean, I've seen swarms of thousands of flies just in my own backyard. But all of these little critters actually only take up 7 millionths of a percentile of the total life on Earth. So where is the rest of this life coming from? That comes from the 5 million trillion trillion, that's 5 with 30 zeros at the end of it, bacteria cells on Earth. And this isn't that surprising when you actually think about it, because it is estimated that there are more bacteria living inside of humans than there are non-bacteria organisms like total. There are so many bacteria cells on this earth that if you were to stack them from end to end, they would have the same length as the visible universe. How these microorganisms could be all around us yet go undetected is truly astonishing. But there is one other thing on this earth that is smaller and more populous than bacteria. So what is it? Well, these things can evolve, they can reproduce, and they're put into a package that's just a few hundred nanometers long. These things are called viruses, and they have been a subject of debate ever since their discovery in 1892. But the consensus opinion about these viruses is that they're not alive because they require a host cell to activate their living qualities. But what if these viruses were considered to be alive? Well, it's been estimated that there could be twice as many viruses on this planet than there are bacteria cells. But the Earth hasn't always been this populated. Because about 3.7 billion years ago, there was an estimated one living thing on Earth. We call this heroic organism the last universal common ancestor. It is quite possible that all life on Earth may have originated from this one cell billions of years ago. Now where this cell came from, no one really knows. Some say that life existed elsewhere in space and hitched a ride on a comet or asteroid and crashed into the Earth, therefore seeding life. But the most popular theory is that on the early Earth there was a tiny spot that had the perfect combination of molecules that binded together, creating the first living cell. Now let's think about that for a second. If a few molecules didn't line up perfectly for a split second billions of years ago, then there might have been no life on planet Earth. That is a pretty fascinating thought, but what would be even more fascinating is if we discovered life somewhere else in the universe. One thing I find cool in the search for extraterrestrial life is that if we were to find life somewhere else in the universe, it might not look like anything that we know on Earth. In fact, it could be made of completely different elements altogether. All life on this rocky planet is largely made up of four elements, carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, and nitrogen, which are coincidentally the four most abundant elements on this planet. So it is quite possible that any future aliens that we come into contact with may be made of silicon instead of carbon and come from a planet that has oceans of ammonia instead of water. Or maybe they could be made out of something that sounds like it's straight out of science fiction. Recent experiments on the International Space Station show that a mix of plasma and dust can form structures that are similar to DNA. By the way, plasma is the fourth state of matter, above solids, liquids, and gases, and is created by ripping off electrons from atoms. This makes a free-floating mix of electrons and ionized gas. When this is combined with dust, they create plasma crystals, which can form double helix structures such as DNA. Sounds pretty crazy, right? If an organism could use this information system instead of DNA, we would have an entirely new kingdom of life. Is it possible that the reason we haven't found life outside side of Earth is because we are looking for life that is too... Earth-like. We simply don't know enough about astrobiology to have laws that life must follow. Life may have formed in the universe 10 billion years ago for all we know, but if it did, where are all of the aliens? This is called the Fermi Paradox, and it states that if life were to exist in other places in the universe, you'd figure that at least one would have mastered intergalactic travel by now and maybe come and visited us by now. 
And if you take into account the Drake equation, which is a series of variables used to estimate how many civilizations there should be in our galaxy alone, there should be 300,000 other intelligent civilizations in our own Milky Way galaxy, and potentially 5.4 times 10 to the 6 intelligent civilizations in our universe. And if each one of those civilizations lived on a planet that's similar to Earth, we would have 2.7 times 10 to the 46 living things in our observable universe. That would mean that there would be more living things in this universe than there are kilograms of matter in our Milky Way. So how many living things are there? Even though 2.7 times 10 to the 46 is a rough estimate, it could be a very low or a very high number. You see, the rare Earth hypothesis states that we are the only planet in the universe with life. Or the Earth could just be one drop in an ocean of life throughout the universe. Because the universe could be infinite and therefore have an infinite variety of life. With each life form being more amazing than the next. And remember, the next time you look up at the night sky, you could be looking at billions upon billions of organisms in distant galaxies. Some of which might even be looking back at you. And thank you for watching Jack's Eye. Click here if you want to see another science video. And click here because it is the awesome button. And you're going to want to click on that button. And I will see you next time.